Hello everyone and welcome once again to Aussie Tech Heads episode 278 and we're here once again Thursday night, uh, Queensland time, 7.30pm and you can watch us live at aussietechheads.com.au, go to the webpage and uh, have some fun, there's a few things going on there now, or right, a few things for sure. Uh, yes, welcome, welcome, Thursday 23rd of February, the month is nearly over and it's a leap year, I've got a couple of uh, leap year facts coming up later on in the show, some things that you might or might not known about. And some things are quite interesting. And joining us tonight is Eric from Sydney. Hey, Eric. Hello, sirs. How do you do? Hello, lounge. Uh, it's been a very interesting day. You've been busy day? Yes, and uh, some machinations going on, which we'll speak about later. <laughs> some Melia Machiavellian machinations. Mm. <laughs> All right. Indeed. Good stuff. So we'll hear a bit about them later. So uh, also don't forget you can listen to us live when, when we are live on radio.thesecrethub.com. You can also, if you want to listen to pre-recorded shows or past shows, you can also do that. Just go to radio.thesecrethub.com. If you're on the internet, on the uh, on your web, on the on your desktop, you can uh, de just, you just download a playlist, open it up in your Windows Media uh, player or whatever, you, you, you guys get the hang of it. And if you're on a, on your phone, you just download a Shoutcast app or something similar and uh, just bung it in. Search for The Secret Hub and you'll find it. And whiz, bang, woo. There you go. Also, the the uh, paper, paper.aussietechheads. Uh, paper yeah, aussietechheads.com.au twice a day. Uh, just covering some stories that have crept up in the uh, in the popularity stakes and uh, it comes out twice a day and also uh, what else is there going on the video yes the video if you want to watch the video it's uh it's currently at youtube.com forward slash the secret hub and just search for whatever episode you want there's a few episodes there now and obviously you just want the latest one because that's the best all right um what where are we going to start where are we going to start tonight i think let me get my show notes well we might as well start with the big the big the bomb that happened today while we were um, while trying we were, to prepare for the show. Yes, yes. Now uh, I was I was on the Skype just having a chat to someone, and bang, everything went dead, internet wise. And I thought it was yeah. the other person, of course, because I'm with Telstra. But no. And then I'm restarting everything, restarting the router. Uh, I'm, I've restarted the the switch. I'm restarting everything. Going, what is going on? And I thought, oh, maybe some rain got into my little Telstra box outside. I'm going, no, no, no. And then my uh, my fears, my my <laughs> my worries or whatever were put to rest, but yet um, allayed or alleviated when Eric sent me an SMS and going. Is your net down? And I went, oh, yes, it's not me. <laughs> yeah, oh, it wasn't not, me. It wasn't you. I thought it was me. I thought, oh, did I do something? Oh, no. I know. I Actually, I'll tell you what I was doing. I clicked on the story about um, Kim.com yeah. having gotten bail. Yes. Yep. I clicked on that and the whole the world exploded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so nothing and happened. That, it, it was funny because... Yeah, it was weird because I could get, I was getting some Sydney Morning Herald sites, uh, but not others. I was, I could log on to the Big Pond site, uh, and yep. and obviously I'm looking for the service stats. That's why I knew I could log on to that. And now obviously it's going big green light, everything a okay, brothers. And I'm going, oh, you idiots. And Funny thing is, we could get on Skype. Yes, yes, and Skype went down, but then it came back. So. I don't know what was going on. I re, I did my call. I was on Skype when I got cut off and redid the call. And uh, yeah, it was it was dicky. But then Eric was offline, and I was able to call this guy I was talking to. So I don't know what's going on. But anyway, yeah. All. Well, my three G on my phone didn't work, so I, was, I thought, okay, it's down. I'll give it half an hour. I'll tether my phone to my laptop and continue with the show notes. Yep. Three G was down. So just through, through my three my dongle, my three G yeah, dongle right. to the laptop instead of my phone. Yeah. That was down too. Nothing yeah. was working. Yeah, that's hopeless. Because actually, I was in the middle of bagging. Uh, you know, remember, Ozzy, he was on the show once uh, a little yeah. while ago, and I was bagging him out because he's going, he rang me on Skype, going, oh, quick, let's have a chat while my internet's up because <laughs> he's still having bad, bad stuff. And uh, so we're having a chat, and then it went down, and I was just paying him out. And uh, <laughs> so, so, yeah, it was my fault. But actually, yeah, he, he, he's, what's he done here? He's just sent me a, a speed test. Here we go. Ozzy just sent me a speed test. Let me load this up. Yeah, and what's 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 he doing now? What's what's he uh, dial up speeds yet? Uh, hang on, I'm just I don't know. He, he, here's Aussie speed test. He's just hot off the press. He's just sent it to me. He's oh, 1600 k up and 14 k down. He's got a good ping though. 
So what's that? Yeah, one point. That's one meg. One point six up. One point four down. That's not too bad. What's up with the? The up's all right. <laughs> one point four up. Oh, one point yeah. four up. One point six down. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's going off, and that's the optic. Yeah, that's rubbish, and that is probably the reason, and it is the reason why Will's not here tonight because he's is stuffed as well, and he's on the Optus cable as well. He said that Optus are going to send him a new modem, but I think if we know, if we take anything that Ozzy said to us in the past, we know that a new modem is not going to fix it. Will it's got nothing, nothing to do with the modem. I, yeah, I, I said that Will he has to go back to um, he, he'll have to go back to uh, do ADSL or something like that. Yeah, remember, remember, I signed up for um. T- two days with Optus. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even two days, was it? <laughs> wasn't it? Oh, probably maximum two days. And yeah. They said, oh, we'll send someone out with another modem. And you said, and forget it. What, this wasn't the modem. Yeah. Was not the modem. No. I, I've, still got, I've still got it here. <laughs> they didn't even... I've still got it here, the new one. They don't want it. They don't want it. They don't want it. Because it's, it's... What's, what are, what, what's <laughs> the point? Why would, they, why would they need it? What network are they going to hook it into? <laughs> That's right. Their network's rooted. Yeah, oh, yeah, hello. it's stuffed. It's stuffed. But anyway, the, the Telstra Nets, the whole country went down, apparently. The, the whole box yeah. and dice. You know, you, know, you, know how, you know which Dodo? It was Dodo, right? But you know who yep. the real Dodo was? It was Conroy tripped over a plug. <laughs> yeah, probably. He, tri- he tripped over a plug while he was, he was trying to get his tongue into Julia. But um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, brown they're, nose oh, they're all sucking up, aren't they? But anyway, that's that's oh, for another dear. show. That's, we don't want to get Eric started. Tune in, people. <laughs> it's going to be a slag fest. Let's go. Chewing the fat. Coming up after Aussie Tech Ed's live. Aussietechheads.com.au. Now, yeah, Dodo was Dodo's problem. Apparently, the, 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 that Telstra had to blame someone. They wouldn't blame themselves, would they? Thirty-five no. minutes it was down this afternoon. Effect, affected the uh, it lasted about thirty-five minutes. Affected an international link used by major service provider Telstra, Optus, and II Net, ADSL, and three G data services and cable, which it doesn't say here because cable's stuffed. Cable was gone. Everything was gone. Uh, industry sources said the network issue came as a result of Dodo. Oh, now, I don't understand how a network can be so um, easily tripped. Now, when you listen, you, to this, yeah, this. you know what I think. There's some clever clever little what? smart ass at dodos thought hey let's do this and maybe it'll circumvent some certain things and we'll get faster speeds on our network and what? at the at the expense of the other networks and what they've happened is they've tripped the whole system i don't see how that the telstra as big a bigger company and as as big as whatever you want to call it it is how it can have something like this happen like you would think that it have um, fail safes you know, like so, this can't happen because um, it's not. You know, it's not as if Dodo, well, as far as I know, I'm no expert, but it's not. As, I don't think as if Dodo's walking into the the Telstra bloody the you know the Telstra big big daddy exchange and starts twisting plugs around. I think yeah, they, it's not as if they can walk in walk in there and say, "Oh, look, I'll have uh, two backbones." That's right. One, fib- <laughs> one fiber optic and. Um, would you like a plastic bag with that? What happens if I reverse the priority on this backbone? Oh, <laughs> it goes upside down. All right, all right, right. Okay. But anyway, it came as a result of Dodo mistakenly issuing new IP route addresses from its system that equated to announcing the whole internet, confusing Telstra systems and causing blackouts on the AS1221 upstream router. Oh. Idiots. A memo purportedly from Optus and posted to the Whirlpool site indicated Dodo had decided to advertise all the global route routes it knows to Telstra. And for some unknown reason, Telstra had accepted these as the best path, which in effect meant all traffic originating from the Telstra network would try and route the traffic via Dodo. Well, they're going to have a big bandwidth bill, aren't they? Sucked in, serves them right. Get that up your backbone. Now, exactly. <laughs> now, Dodo, stick, that up your, stick that up your backbone. <laughs> Dodo Chief Executive Larry Kestelman, that's a good old cartoon name, Larry Kestelman confirmed the outage could be sourced to Dodo as a result of a minor hardware issue. A minor, minor hardware issue. <laughs> yeah, very minor. <laughs> a minor hardware oh, issue. Oh, you Dodo. <laughs> you Dodo Eds. Now, um, look, I, I had a couple of uh, stories about things like this today. Another one I've got here. Did you know that the mobile phone is 25 years old? I, fa- I only, well, a few weeks ago we had a little video of chewing the fat of the mobile phone, but I didn't realise today was the day. And I'll show you a picture. Now, when I show you this picture, for those of you that can see the video, I want to know where the guy on the end 
hides his phone. If you can tell me, you're the winner. You probably you can't see that if you're on a little screen, but anyway. The guy, oh, the guy in red? The guy no, in red? No, the other guy at the end. With the lycra, Grant Kenny. With the lycra pants on. Yeah, that's Grant Kenny. Oh, you're I, reckon he's, I reckon he's put his phone down his pants. <laughs> but anyway, it's, um, it's um, 25 years old, this phone. And look at the size of it. It's a beauty. It is a beauty. What, the f- you're, talking, you're still talking about the phone? Oh, yeah, the phone. <laughs> All right, okay, good. Sorry, just let me clarify that. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about the phone. Look at the size. It's a brick. It's a brick. It's, it's as big as the opera house. <laughs> look at it. I know, it's huge. It. You, know, she, you know what she's doing? She's thinking, this thing is going to give me cancer. Look at the size of this battery. <laughs> But now here's the here's some features and benefits of the I don't even know what the model is of this old phone, and I can't even read it anyway. It would have uh, been a Motorola, or yeah. a BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the, the, the 25 years old celebration of 25 years of handheld phones. Uh, it's been 25 years since the launch of the first handheld phone. Now, going on from that, I had a, a mate around today who has purchased his little uh, three, his little HTC 4G device. And it's not, right. and, and his 4G, he can get it where he lives on the Gold Coast. It's not everywhere on the Gold Coast, but it is uh, in, in some places and it's coming to most places. And just have a look. I'm going to show you a speed test. Now, Aussie, if you're watching, look away. Look away. It'll, look only, away. it'll only cause you distress. Now, this is, this is a speed test from his HTC, is it, his, what is it, HTC, whatever phone he had uh, on the Telstra 4G network. Get them India. 36 down, 36 meg down, and 15 meg up to the Sydney server. 1900k away, ping 89. So that's not bad. Brilliant. That's not bad. Uh, typical, typical download speeds ranging from 2 meg to 40 megs. You can download up to twice as fast as the next fastest Australian mobile network technology. Where 4G is not available, you'll still enjoy super fast 3G speeds, which can include dual channel. Ah, uh, Previously. Yeah, so they bond the channels. Beautiful. Yeah, so that's um, that's awesome. So yeah, he was getting some. Th- I reckon Aussie should just get himself one of those, you know. But then he get, put, but, plug it in the back of his router. Yeah, but then he said, but you know, you're only getting six gig a month, or something. Well, you can get others. There are there are others. It's probably going to be more expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah, probably. But I oh, know I, I oh, he's got he's, he's going to plead with Telstra tomorrow, see if they can lay him a new cable or something. That's probably all they do anyway. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so that's and, right. I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> that's right. Now, if you go to the, I've got a link in the show notes. You can go to the Telstra site, jump on the mobile section, and you can look for the coverage of 4G. Now I've just got a little a little coverage map here, the Goldie. And as you can see, those um, that dark blue area, that's the 4G, all up there. So un- unfortunately, I'm down about here. I'm a little bit out of it, but I mean, it, it'll come. It'll come. And then I'm in the, the 3G zone, and then there's, you know, the orange stuff, which is the, the up your zone. We don't care about your zone. But, um, yeah. but yeah, so, yeah, so it, it's happening. Because I thought it was only in Brisbane, but it's uh, in capital cities. But it is coming to regional areas. Yeah, it's been rolled out pretty quickly. A bit faster than the freaking NBN. Yes, yeah. Jeez, they only advertised it. They only sold their first phone a month ago, and they're already starting to roll it out. I mean, how fast are these people? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Jesus. Yeah, so uh, look, so look, that phone was quite good. It was, um, it, it, it was pretty snappy. It was, um, yeah, it was good. Now, what I think I'm waiting for is that the iPhone five will be four G. Yes, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm predicting. Yep. So by that time, my three G dongle contract will be over. Yes. I will hand it back. Yep. And I will just use the four G exclusively for tethering the phone, and I'll just mm. get uh, you. Can, because you know, with Telstra, ten dollars a month, you get an extra gig. So right, that's right. pretty good. Yeah. So yeah. if you if my plan's got two gig, and I thought, oh, I'm going to tether, so I'll just add another ten dollars, and I get an extra gig a month. That's pretty cheap, really. That's not too bad. But um, mm. but what what were you what are you going to tether for? Like, are you like when well, you're out and think, about? Look, or? I've got the dongle for things like um, you know, for like for example, today. Yeah. It goes down. I go right, bang, thrown in the computer. I can continue working. I can still log into the office. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Mm. Now that's what I'll use it for as a backup. Mm. I, then I don't need to buy the dongle, so I'll save myself, you know, thirty-five bucks a month or something. Yeah. Well, that yeah, that's right. So you know, I would um, be just tethering all the way myself. I, I'd 
Yeah. Tether, go for gold. But uh, now the iPhone 5, and I think it's probably uh, happily got a, got a roundabout on an October launch. Is that the rumour? Oh, I think the rumour is September, October. Yeah. Yep. So that's when I run out of my contract with the... Beautiful. The, yeah. So... Um, Look, I, I was. I'm happy. I'm happy. I, I can't. I can't think about getting out of my contract now because uh, what am I going to do? I, I'm going to be. I'm going to be kicking myself up the backside if I. What's the pro- mm. If I sign up again with the Telstra now and get a 4S when come October, like for the sake of six months, and I can get the yes, 4G exactly. iPhone 5. So, look, my or phone- the other thing you can do, the, the other alternative is um, get yourself a, a Telstra plan, throw mm. it into your in the your Android. And then, when the iPhone five comes out, yeah, th- just um, buy it outright, which mm. is expensive, and then whack the SIM card in that. But that's probably the more expensive way of doing it. I'll just I'll just bundle it up in like well I, I can get a prepaid Telstra card. I, I checked today with uh, the guy that came around today. He was on Telstra and I, he had the big SIM card, so I, I flipped it in. Yep, and and it's right. It is unlocked. They are coming factory unlocked, which is good. Yep. Uh, yep. So yeah, so look, I'll just wait, and, and then come October, I'll have my iPhone, and and then I'll also have my Android device just for Android mucking around. He's on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But back yeah. up. Yeah, that's right. But that's right. But the at uh, the Apple iPhone five, uh, apparently the Apple has filed a patent, a patent or whatever you want to call it, patent I suppose, to let people share files with the person they are talking to. So this is all rumours. So obviously none of this is uh, is fact. Um, but uh, that's rumours. So according to the 9 to 5 Mac site, the iPhone 5 will feature a 4-inch screen display made by LG and a different casing compared to the 4S. Now, look, I normally don't bring up stories with rumours and, and stuff like that because, you know, what a bit of a waste of time. But I don't think we've really given the iPhone 5 much much go uh, of late, and it's probably getting time where you should uh, start thinking about it. I think, mm-hmm. oh yeah, you start, you know, start getting excited if you're if you're that type of person. The iPhone five will have a flat battery, thinner and more powerful. Uh, so possibly in in with the with the foreknowledge that maybe it's going to be LTE. Now I've got a little or pick. the or quad core. Yes, yes. Uh, it's expected to have sixteen thirty two or sixty four gig of internal memory. Uh, however, also like other iPhones, it may not offer users the option to increase that capacity through the SD card. Now here's a little picture. Of, I don't know where who took this or where this come from or whatever. Is it, it looks like a mock-up. Yeah, but it is a different casing. It does look pretty sleek. It does look nice. looks thin, but I don't know if I like the look of the f- the overall look of it. Not sure. Mm, mm. Not sh- not sure. You've seen that one before? No, I've just seen it now. Mm. So I'm not um, sure I like it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see how it, how it works. I suppose when it when it happens. So looking around about October, they they. The, 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 all the, they reckon. Now, right. but sticking with the uh, the iPhone 5 and with rumours, because there's another iOS device coming out and it's supposedly coming out next month. Now, that's the... Yes. The iPad 3. Yes. Now, the iPad 3 with Retina display, uh, quad-core A6 mm. and 4G. Now, if the iPad 3 comes out with 4G, mm. the iPhone 5... <laughs> It's a, it's a given. It has to be, doesn't it? It has to be, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think it's a given anyway, it's a given anyway, but it has to be. Now, I don't know if this is a mock-up or if this is a, a true picture, but um, we can have a look at this one. It's uh, very... It's just all tablet, isn't it? Just no... Yeah, no, it's all screen. No, a lot of real estate. Yeah. Do you like that one? I don't mind that. Looks nice. The blue's nice on a bit it. A bit wor- I'd be a bit worried to drop to drop it. Looks like uh, uh, 3D icons by the looks of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, the uh, the rumor there is what March the seventh. That will be the, re- the the announcement date. When it's for sale, it's probably going to be a month after. I right. would guess. Right. Yeah. Fair enough too. I suppose. But look in the show notes. There's links. There's another link there to more iPad rumors and iPhone rumors and. And whatever other rumours you want to get yourself into, they're all there. So, um, yeah, go to the uh, show notes. Are always uh, at aussietechheads.com.au. Just link to the show notes. And, and most times I'm, I'm trying to get them up for the show. So they're probably live on the site now as, uh, as we are speaking. And, uh, yeah, so that's probably the way to go. And also just live yeah. on the site now while, I, while I've got your attention is the, the footy starting next week. The good old footy. And the Aussie Tech Head footy comps are back. 
So so join up. Just go to the homepage and there's a little graphic down there. Click on that. Now, it's, it's done via Sportsbet this year. And it's just because they do all the tallying up and everything. And it is 18 plus. Uh, but because it's a sport betting, it's a betting site, you know, that runs it. So it's 18 plus to join up. But I'm sure you can, little boys and girls can find their way around if they have to. But um, look, So what are you saying, Glenn? Are you uh, suggesting for a minute that they lie about their age? No, not at all. Not at all. Get, get your mum and dad's permission is all That's we right. I'm just saying, you get your mum and dad to sign in and you give them the tips and then they'll put them in for you. There you go. Now, um, yeah, so join, there's AFL and NRL. Now, the prize, because this is why I chose this one, because it's, it's not just, a, it's not just a, a, a gutless comp, if you, if, you know, if, you, if you want to call it that. But the, the sports bet, you actually, if you tip in our comp, in the Aussie Tech Heads comp, if you tip in that comp, you are also um, like tipping with the rest of the sports bet tipsters, if you know what I mean. So we've got our yes. own comp. But there is the bigger comp. And the first prize, if you are an absolute gun tipper, the first prize, if you come first, not only obviously not in the Aussie Tech Head comp, but then you went so good that you are actually first place in Australia and you are the winner, you, you're up for 200 grand. Like that's, wow. Yeah, it's good stuff. And there's heaps of other prizes, weekly prizes and, and all this sort of stuff. If you go there, click on the link to it, and you, you'll see uh, you just go view prizes if you, that's what you're interested in. Join up. But that's why I chose it because, it, it's, you know, it, it's, you're not just tipping for free. You're tipping and hopefully, you know, you could snag something. So what you're saying is our stats go into the general pool. Yeah, so your, your, um, your score is actually yes. is also replicated onto the general ladder. The general the, well, I'm, I'm in on that. That's it. I'm yeah. in. <laughs> You're in. Good stuff. So there's two comps, AFL and... I could buy Canada. a really good mixer with that sort of money. <laughs> oh, you reckon? <laughs> maybe. 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 Now, yeah, so, yeah, so that's the uh, footy uh, tip and comp. So, so get, your, get, your, um, get your laughing gear around that. That's good. Uh, what else is going on these days? You want, oh, you want a funny, funny tech, ridiculously stupid and tech story that you'd never think of yeah i think we all know we all remember the blackberry playbook the tablet yeah yeah that they brought out yep not so long ago maybe it would have been what a year ago i suppose now yeah yeah so that's probably i don't know how many people bought it one or two possibly um do you know that it has just they have just released now an actual app application for the blackberry playbook that allows you to now use email on it. Oh, wow. How wow. Ad- how advanced. Well done, fellas. So it's just now they've never had an email client on it. They release a tablet without an email client. That's right. And they wonder why they're going freaking broke. <laughs> that is rubbish. That's rubbish. Now, look, I'm going to show you the tablet. I've got one. I haven't got one, but I can show you a picture of it. That would be what it looks like, something like that. Yeah. Can you, now, if you zoom in on that, can you see an email app? No, you can't because they don't have one. <laughs> oh, I, can only, uh, I can't zoom too much. Oh, it's oh. gone crazy. It's gone crazy. It's gone nuts. But, uh, yeah, but isn't that crazy? So how, how, how dumb is that? How dumb is that? You know, so they just released it today. I thought, well, well done, fellas. Great yeah. company 10 years ago, great R&D, great innovation. You fell asleep at the wheel. Yeah, that's rubbish. Really did. You really fell asleep. What, what can you do on it? What, play play just, car games? Well, like, what can you do on it? Surf the web, you know. Watch what? Leo on with Flash. Well, I suppose you could do your Gmail, but I suppose there's no Gmail app, so it makes it hard, doesn't it? We've well, got to do Gmail via your web, your web yeah. But what about the what about the corporate guys that had BlackBerry phones, and the and the company's gone. Oh, look, have a tablet as well, um, yeah. but you can't check your mail on it. Yeah. So you're going on a business trip. What's the point of you know? yeah, then in the end, you've got a tablet, you've got a laptop, and you've got your phone. So what are these things because running? Because the tablet doesn't do anything. Do they, what do they run? Do we know? Is it like Android? Uh, it would be Android. No, Otherwise it's not Android. It's, it's, their own, it's their own uh, software. Their own, yeah, their own crazy crap. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Blackberry. That is funny. Yeah, that is funny. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. Move on. So you mentioned uh, good old Kimmy, Kimmy.com. He's, uh, he's Kimmy.com. Been, yes. Dot com. He's been... Out. He's been released from uh, wherever he was being held. New Zealand, I think. He has been released and he's been 
um, electronically monitored, which I think he's probably got a nice, pretty ankle bracelet, hmm. and he's not allowed to use the internet, he'd be going crazy. Well, He'd be going crazy. You reckon he would be? I suppose you would be, wouldn't you, if you spend most of your life doing stuff? Your whole life's been on the internet. Yeah. What's he going to do now? Yeah. They've frozen all his assets. He can't even go down to the pub for a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, oh, jeez. He looks like he needs one too. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah. But, uh, yeah, good old Kimmy.com. Well, and same with his, what he, because he was doing torrents and stuff like this. I've got another story about torrents, actually, tonight, uh, about the Pirate Bay. So, oh, yes. Yeah, so we've all, we all know the Pirate Bay. Now, I don't know where my little picture went for that, but anyway, we all know the Pirate Bay. Uh, it is, so they're going to go, they're, they're vowing to go underground, as they have been for the last seven years. But it looks like they may be doing <laughs> it sooner now than later. The Pirate Bay has said that it will adapt rather than die as it faces legal blocks in the UK. So obviously if it goes through in the UK, it's going to go through probably... You know, numerous places around the world, the Western world. B- yeah, Bermuda, yep. Vanuatu. <laughs> on Monday night, on Monday, the High Court ruled that the site facilitates copyright infringement. It will decide in June whether ISPs must block UK customers from accessing the site. So that'll, that'll stop them, I guess. The Pirate Bay said it would be moving to new methods of file distribution by the end of the month. So the right. 29th of February is the last day that they will offer torrents in the current form. So they're already, at the moment, they've already uh, got the two systems running side by side. Uh, torrents and this system, which they call magnets. Now, then it will be magnets, which work pretty much the same. Uh, so you go, they go on to say, please understand that it's necessary move in the saga known as the Pirate Bay. Not having torrents will be a bit cheaper for us, but it will also make it hard for our common enemies to stop us. <coughs> now, what about your ISP though? Can't, they don't, don't, they, they pretty much know what site you've been on. You can still get busted for that, I'm sure. They, no one could probably find them, but the ISP knows what you're up to. Yeah, well, well, I think, well, as it goes on here, it just says the main reason torrent sites are moving toward magnet links is since the Pirate Bay won't be hosting the files that link to copyright content. That is the torrent files. It's more difficult to claim. This is more legal right. from a legal perspective. It's more right. difficult to claim that the site is directly enabling the downloading of copyrighted material. So it looks like. So from my understanding is that. So you know, if you if you were to download a torrent, you download the small file, which then yes. which then lets the your your I don't know your BitTorrent or your Voos or whatever client you use. It then instructs the client how to go and get that that fo- the, the the file that you're after. Yes. But so I, I guess yeah. that by you downloading the torrent file and if the Pirate Bay are facilitating you with that file, well that's where they're 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 thinking they're like, okay, we're gonna get around it. Fine. So the magnet is 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 just like a link in a browser apparently. And it will still it's just that it's not a file. You don't download anything, but it, the your BitTorrent client just knows what to do with it when you click mm. on it. Yeah, like a seed file. Yeah, it just knows what to do. But look, you can find more information out through the Wikipedia, or if, even if you're that t- if you're that interested, just go to Pirate Bay and and search for something. You'll see the little magnet link next to it, and then the actual torrent file is going to disappear at the end of this month. Mm, mm, we'll see. I, look, I don't really. I've never. I don't think I've been to Pirate Bay once. I've had and, a look. Uh, oh, look. Know, I, didn't, I didn't get anything. I just thought, oh, what's the big deal? Yeah. Well, look, you go into um, Pirate Bay just for a laugh. Go to the. Uh, uh, summonses or whatever the legal the legal stuff right down there's a link yes. right at the bottom of the page, and look well, I'll go there now because it is it is absolutely the funniest thing that <laughs> you you find a good one and it's pretty funny. Now search and download any file. Oh, looks like they've changed their little thing. Oh, I, might, I don't know technical support, FAQs home. I don't know. Maybe they've changed. That doesn't look like the Pirate Bay, does it? That must be. That's what yeah, it says. PirateBay.com. Is that what it is? That doesn't look right. Hang on. Or let me... is it PirateBay.org? I don't know. I don't know. I never go there. <laughs> Pirate Bay. This might be it here. I thought that. Yeah, uh, that looks better. That looks better. The Pirate Bay. Now. The Pirate Bay. Now you got down here, down the bottom here. Uh, where are we? We'll pick one out. Legal threats, right there. Now they, they've got them from everyone. Like Microsoft. Do you want to hear one from Microsoft? Yeah, go on. Okay. So, dear sir, madam, 
This letter serves as notification under Digital Millennium Copyright Act, blah, blah, blah. Serious, 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 blah, 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 blah. Okay, now, that's, that's the type of stuff they get from everyone. Now, their response, we'll go to this response here, this one that's actually sponsored from EA. Uh, uh, maybe I here we go. Yeah. Hello, and thank you for contacting us. We have shut down the website in question. Oh, wait, just kidding, we haven't. Since the site in question is fully legal, unlike certain other countries such as the one you're in, we have some copyright laws here, but we also have polar bears roaming the streets and attacking people. <laughs> <laughs> then, then they go on, then they, they oh, the, then the real letter is, this unauthorised activity with respect to the distribution of EA software producers uh, constitutes infringement, blah, 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 blah. Then, it, then they reply, please don't sue us right now. Our lawyer is passed out in the alley from too much moonshine. <laughs> So please at least wait until he's found and doesn't have a huge hangover. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, they go on with some more. Le the, the, then the letter goes on with more stuff. And then they reply, you're free to demand anything you want. So are we. We demand that you cease and desist sending letters like this since they're frivolous and meaningless. Where should I send the bill for the consumed disk space and bandwidth? <laughs> so yeah, they're pretty, they're they're pretty full on. Yeah, so they're pretty. Um, yeah, they love it. They love it. Some of those. That's probably that's not one of the funniest ones I've ever seen. But there are some funny ones. I think Adobe have got some real funny replies to them. But um, yeah, but that's good. That's good. Very All right. Good. Um, now uh, Audible. No, no uh, Audible uh, thingo this week. No, I couldn't. I couldn't find anything that was worth talking about tonight. I was looking around and. That's all right. I, I oh, actually. I, just, I didn't want to start just bringing up. You know. Just Billy Connolly's Billy, Billy Connolly's best, you know, <laughs> greatest hits. Yeah, fair enough. Look, I, I, if I had five minutes, I was going to go and find something myself, but uh, I couldn't. But um, but that's not to mean that you, you can't find something. It, it's uh, one hundred thousand titles are out there in the Audible dot com, and if you want to get one for free and you haven't already signed up, go to the AussieTechHeads dot com dot au webpage, click on the Audible link there, and sign up from that link, and you will get your free first free book. And uh, and you can keep it forever. And if you continue to sign up, you'll get you just go through the list of a hundred thousand books, and you'll be right. They've uh, they've got a an Audible app, I believe, on the iPhone. They do just for specifically playing your Audible Audible yep. selections. Uh, but just as good to play it through their normal music player. Yep, yep, yep. So you chuck them in your iTunes and chuck them everywhere. I think you download MP3s. You can probably download different, also other different formats. It'll just work yes. everywhere. So, so that's good. So yeah, go to the if you haven't done so, AussieTechHeads.com.au. You click on the Audible link uh, and go from there, or you could actually also go to AudibleTrial.com forward slash AussieTechHeads and uh, and do that. And we thank Audible for their generosity in uh, providing us with that offer. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now, <laughs> thank you very much. Now, oh geez, I haven't I haven't queued up Garth for tonight. Geez, I've been slack, haven't I? Oh, it's been one of those Thursdays. The internet goes down as usual it on has. a Thursday. I knew I'd forgotten something, and I'd forgotten poor Garth. So I'm just going to quickly go and f try and find Garth. And we might, I think he's going to – I don't know what he's talking about tonight. But he's uh, – oh, something – Alarmed. That's right. Alarmed. Have you heard of Alarmed? Neither, alarmed. No, I have not. No, well, neither had I. But hang on. Where, the, where is this stuff? Now, here we go. Here we go. So, I always use – here we go. Output – Garth alarmed. So let's see how how good this is going to play. And um, here we go, waiting for it to open. Hey. And we're going to recapture that little interlude music, please. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, yeah. So here's Garth. He's got a little little review. Uh, on Alarmed, apparently, and we'll, we'll we'll come back after he's finished. Hey, Glenn and Garth. How you doing, Garth? G'day, Glenn. How you going, mate? Yeah, not, not too bad. Now, you got another app for us this week? I have another app for you. What do you got? Alarmed. Oh, no, I'm not, actually. Aren't you? No, I'm just, just taking it be. easy. Yeah. You should be. <laughs> okay. When all... it's five o'clock in the morning and you've got a big, long day ahead of you and you need to wake up, Yep. Alarmed is the way oh, to go. I'm aware, but I'm not alarmed. Okay. All no, right. I'm, I'm, I'm often alarmed yep. first thing in the morning. Right, right. I like, yep. Is this the world I'm in? Yes, it is. Okay, <laughs> cool. Let's get ourselves used to the fact that I'm now awake. Yes. No, stuff. but seriously, look, alarmed. Um, 
I know your iPhone um, has a great clock app in it where you can set alarms and reminders and so forth. Yep. Alarm does basically the same thing on steroids. Right. If you want to put it, the, <laughs> put it in that, whole, that lovely old cliche. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, basically, you've got – you can have it so that it will send you to sleep, i.e. have a playlist, podcast, audio book, whatever it is, playing for a certain number of minutes, mm. um, then fade out. Then in the morning, another different alarm can wake you up. Um, you can set heaps of different kinds of reminders that will – you know, continue to nag you until you pay attention or will just be a quite, you know, quite gentle reminder yes. that you need to do something. Like a gradual increase in yeah, tone whatever, or something. Whatever you like, basically. Mm. If you want to if you want to set a reminder, do a countdown, anything like that, alarmed will there's take o- care of there's it. There's over 80 high-quality custom sounds. Wowzers. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> one alar- one so sound for each it's, alarm. It's, you know, it's it's a bit like, you know, make up on a on a pig, really. I suppose yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> they are. You know, it is kind of like who hasn't got a new phone and gone through and played with all the different ringtones, really? No, who yeah. hasn't? Well, done that's that? right. I've, I've we done all it. do it. Oh, of course you do. Of and this do. is the same. It's just a whole heap of different sounds you can have for your alarms. But at the end of the day, what it does, it does well, and that's good. as a really good quality alarm clock. Now, this is this is iPhone and iPad native. iPhone and iPad. Look, I've got the picture of it up there on the iPad, but hey, I, there's nothing in there because I don't, I don't use it on the iPad. Yeah. I use it on my phone. And you've got a database um, backup. What's that? Is that, that backs up? Just, yeah, so that, you know, if you delete it off your phone, you get a new phone, you can set it all up again. So with all your reminders and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Oh, here's, yeah. another, here's another plus. A full support for devices with retina displays. Great. <laughs> Great. So, in, in other words, they've done nice little icons. And uh, given that I can't see the icons, I really couldn't get this. <laughs> but, hey, for some of you who love to look at those nice, crisp images, yeah, that's, that's right. fantastic. That's right. Uh, it's a um, it's, look, sorry, Glenn, cutting you off there. One thing I do love about it with this developer, really responsive to any feedback. Um, this app is completely – the free version is completely um, – it'll do everything pretty much. Yep. So the ex- um, yeah, what it, the extras package? There's not much to not much to talk about in that. No, there's not, and that's the point. It's like, look, guys, I've made a fantastic app. Mm. You want to ch- chuck me a bone? Send me a few bucks. Yeah. Here's an extras package you can buy if you want to. Yep. The whole thing will work without it, and you know, whenever I see an app and you know a developer who's ready to put himself out like that, first thing I do is buy it. That's right. Well, it's, it's another free one. It's another good one, and you get that in the app store. Yep. Good, good stuff. We'll see you next time, Gav. Night-night. See ya. No, 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 no. He's not nice, Garth. That was Garth. So thanks, Garth. Uh, yeah, so he's um, he's probably going to come around and record some more of those little gems for us pretty soon. And, uh, yeah, it's always good to get some uh, get some uh, input and some reviews and feedback from the viewers on what they use, what they use. So also, if you want to send something in for us, you can send it in. Just email it, or if you want to send the video in, bump it up on the YouTube so we can download it and we'll play it, uh, whatever, whatever. If you want something to say, I'm sure you can find a way to get it to us. All right. Where are we moving on to now? Uh, Eric, you got any more little things to go? I've got a couple of uh, stories. Hang on, we've, we've lost Eric. His audio's gone. Here we go. There Hello. Is. Oh, loudness. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Dell's earnings fall. Missed earnings outlook. Um, this is from the company in 1997 that uh, when asked what should Apple do, they said we should uh, liquidate Apple and give the money back to the shareholders. Oh, when was so, this? In 1997, <laughs> when Michael Dell was asked, "What do you think Apple should do?" When they were, you know, just after they'd hired Steve Steve Jobs back, he said, "Yeah, they should just liquidate Apple and uh, put send the money back to the shareholders." So, and, and that's why they're they're going. What, what if you ask uh, what Steve Cook today? What should Dell do? He will probably say they should liquidate. Say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, liquidate. It. Liquidate. Now, Dell. Dell used to be the number one PC. Maker, they're now number three. Right. Oh. Um, they are now worth one tenth of what Apple one is tenth. worth. Oh, gee, I'd be la- I'd be happy with that though. Oh yeah, fifty billion. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are they worth that much? Is Dell worth that much? Yeah. 50 wow. Mil. 
Yeah, right. It's still well, worth more than it's still it's still worth more than Telstra. Yeah, Telstra's worth forty billion. Wow, wow, that's 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 pretty much. You can't fathom it, can you? You can't. You can't. No, a, a no, it's a lot of money. But you know, considering they were number one, and you know, fifty billion isn't anything to be sneezed at. Um, the company posted a net income slide of eighteen percent to seven hundred and sixty-four million. Mm. Keeping in mind, Apple's profits per quarter are in the billions now. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So that puts it in perspective. Yeah, so um, massive, massive. there you go. And so they're yeah. um, they're trying to get out of their low margin business, and their low margin business would be um, computers. <laughs> computers. <laughs> well, and I, I heard Leo talking about this, and I agree with him. Is that consumers kept demanding lower and lower prices? Yeah. Yep. Right. So they said, okay, we'll give you lower on prices. So our margins are five, ten percent on a computer. But we'll strip out the support because the pri- the high prices uh, basically support. Yeah. And so when you ring Dell for support now, and you can't get hold of anybody, and it takes forever for them to fix it or they don't fix it properly, that's why because you're getting what you pay for. Mm. And a lot of people go, oh, well, Apple stuff's more expensive, blah blah blah, and all this sort of stuff. But you know what? If you've got a problem with Apple, there's never a drama. Uh, yeah. There's not. And that's what you're paying for. Never uh, a drama. Yeah. And I think that that's where they stuck to their guns. Like everyone knows. They stuck to their guns. Yeah. Yes. Every everyone knows. Everyone's heard of the Apple tax. Everyone's aware of it. Yeah. yeah. Apple tax here. Apple tax there. But they said. But everyone knows it. what they're getting. Yeah. Exactly. They said, look, we want to be. The, deliver the best quality or the best service that we can. Exactly. That's the thing. If you can deliver the best quality, and not just the best quality, because some of the ugliest looking products in the world are great quality, yeah. but great looking products that are great quality mm. with no hassle with, and great customer service to back it up, then yeah. you can pretty much charge what you're charging and no one's going to complain. No, that's right. They can charge $1,000 for their higher end, high end iPad, but the, uh, the highest end Android tablet might sell for 499 but, and they're all saying, well, you know, ours is only half that price. But you know what? If I bought an HTT tablet and it's and it really and it just fucked up, excuse yeah. me. Oh, hang on. Um, where would I take it? <laughs> where would I put? Where, who do I return it to? Yeah, Harvey well, Norman. Yeah, that's right. No, Office Works. I don't think so. Yeah, no, that, that's a, that's right. And I think and now it's just made it so much easier with these dedicated Apple stores just popping up everywhere, and especially near me. Yes, like, yeah, you just turn up. Yeah. You make an appointment. You show up. Within 15 minutes, you're out of there with either uh, a new tablet, phone, computer, or whatever, or a docket that says, come back tomorrow, we'll have it fixed. Now, the next generation of the Mac OS is just OS X. They've dropped the Mac from it, and it's just OS X. Are they ever going to move away from OS X? They just keep bringing out versions, don't they? Yeah. But well, I've actually, I've got that running, but I can't <coughs> talk about it. But it's now called Mountain Lion. Yeah, so that's the new name. one. That's the new one. So they've gone from, you know, leopard, snow leopard, and then lion, mountain lion. Yeah, so um, maybe not as much imagination there. But anyway, it uh, apparently strengthens the integration between the company's computer and mobile platforms. It's said to bring greater coordination with the iCloud and generally make things smarter and easier. So there you go. There you go. Oh, look, I've got got it running, mate, and it's not that much of a big deal. I can't talk about it much because it's on a developer's license. Yeah, but I suppose that like it's not going to be what what can really change. There's not going to be any big earth shattering. No, it's not a massive one. Apple's um, like their iPhones. Every second one is just a slight upgrade. Mm. Yep. And then the one after that is the big one. Like iPhone four was the big one, and then iPhone four S was a slight upgrade. So iPhone five will be the big one. Now, appara- and their OS X is similar. Now, apparently, the the this is the, from the unofficial Apple weblog. Now, following Macs were supported by OS X Lion will not run Mountain Lion. There's quite a few of them in the in the little list there. Yeah, um, you've got to make sure that your um, uh, it goes back 2008 computers will run them. Uh, will they? Yes, pretty much 2007 and back. You've got to be careful what you're doing. Yeah, you got to yep. be you got to be careful. Well, there's a list in the show notes and also a link to that unofficial Apple web blog. But I'm sure when it comes out, just make, if you've got an old Mac. Uh, just make sure you, you, you do it. You, you make sure. Like late 2006 iMacs, no. Uh, all plastic MacBooks that predate the aluminium unibody redesign. MacBook yeah. MacBook 2 1, MacBook 3 1, MacBook 4 1. I don't know what that MacBook no, comma 1 is. No, no, I don't know what that is. Yeah. It must have been the blue one. They had the black and white ones. Remember no, those? Yeah, yep. Yeah, the ori- those. The original MacBook Air. How old is that now? Is that- um. 
That doesn't Ooh, that wouldn't be three, that. four years. Yeah, well, that'll take that back to 2008. That's, that may be the, the... Yeah, but I think it's that one. In, in that specific, particular instance, I think it's probably the process is not, can't, probably not strong enough. Right, right. And it, all, was a, it was a very, very um, dumbed-down processor. I think it was a single-core Pentium or something on, in the original MacBook Air. Oh, okay. And they got the original MacBook, the original Mac Pro and its 8-core 2007 refresh. Jeez, you'd be spewing 8-core and it won't run it. And uh, late 2006 and early 2008, X-Serves. Serves? Yeah. Serves. X-Serves, yeah. X-Serves. Yeah, hmm. X-Serves. Yeah. There we go. X-Serves. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> so there, there we go. Now, moving on to... Have we got any... Did I, I thought I had another little... Uh, did I have a, I'd had another little iPhone one. No, I mustn't have. But we can talk about this one. Now, this one, I don't know. I think this is another... This is another... Just another rubbish sort of a story. Let me get the little picture up here. Now, the Queensland government, you all know we're in election mode up here. Anna, yeah, how's it going? <laughs> oh, it's been pretty quiet. I got me postal vote today. So um, other than that, it's been pretty quiet. Now, the Queensland Premier, Anna Bly, has pledged five... And, oh, I just hate all this money going everywhere. But it's $5.7 million, uh, trial. So everything's a trial or a or a talk fest or a or a public. It's a it's oh, it's all know. a load of crap. But anyway, my my question to these politicians is, if you think it's such a good idea, why do you, why you just roll these things out around election time? Yeah, that's right, exactly. But the, the, but anyway, uh, she's pledged five point seven million dollars for the trial of an iPad for iPad devices in twenty secondary schools. Should the party win the state election next month? So only so 20... it's a trial. So if they do the trial and it doesn't work, what's that? They've just blown six million dollars. Is yeah, that well, how that works? Yeah, pretty much. But but yeah, well but probably a bit more because under the under the trial, over five thousand year seven students will receive an iPad two device uh, with thirty two gig storage and Wi Fi connectivity. Now Maramba State Secondary College would be the first school to receive the devices under the election promise. Okay, whoopie do, good for them. The remaining schools would get devices in. 2013, 2014. Like, so iPad that, 2, when they've already got iPad 5 out, everyone's getting iPad 2s. But even but why, if it's a trial, why is, it, why is it one school getting it for a year and then the rest of them are going to get it not till 2014? Like, five because point, it's a load of crap. Yeah, well, I know, that's what it it's is. It's a load that's, of crap. That's just, what it is. It just reinforces that it is a load of crap. Because uh, what they do yeah. is they're spreading it out over budget yeah. years. So that they mm. don't get accused of blowing everything in the one. You know, when the election time they say, you know, we're going to do this and you're going to do this, and you read the fine print. Oh, but that's going to be rolled out over the next 100 years. Because yeah. if we if we had to if we had to deliver everything we promised leading up to the election, we'd be Greece. <laughs> but I mean, but but with a, a, an investment like look and and quite and honestly, six million dollars in the whole scheme of the state budget is not a great deal of money. What but, about one laptop per child? What happened to that? Oh, that's now they're giving out. Now they're giving that didn't work. So now we're giving out laptops, and that's not going to work. That's out the window. But now here's here's, uh, here's the other fun point I wanted to make. Now the trial funds will be drawn from the Queensland Education Trust, right? Now, and here we go. This this is another one I don't quite understand. Tenders would be issued within a hundred days of Bly's Labor Party returning to office. Now tenders. What? Start again. What? Tenders, right? Yeah. Oh, right, will be okay. would be issued within 100 days of the Labor Party returning to office. So it's going to take them three months to issue a bit of paper, to put an ad in the paper that says, um, yeah, please but, tender this. Yeah, but... Three but, months but, to write an ad. But you're tendering iPads. As far as I know, how many people make iPads? So what Apple... Oh, gee, I don't know. I'll have to look that up. So Apple... IPad, tender... Why would no? There's no money in it. And look, they know this. They know this. They're not stupid. What, They're why, very why manipulative. They... They know no one's going to tender to supply iPads because they're making one percent. But why would they're you go direct to Apple? That's exactly, exactly like morons. They, they're going to the. Like, it's not like a PC where you know you've got Acer and Dell and and HP, HP and, and, and all the rest of them and blah 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 blah. You go oh let let's try, let's let's get a um, monopolistic product like the iPad and let's tender it out. Let's see who's yeah. gonna. Who, let's see what the lowest price we can get it for. Apple writes in. Oh, I wish to offer you a ten, the Apple iPad for five hundred ninety-five dollars. Oh, gee, only one tender. We'll take it. 
Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, can you get any lower? No, we can't. Okay, no. we'll take it. And by the way, Apple iPad 2s, I saw in Big W, you can get them for about 494 if you look carefully. That's because iPad 3 is coming up. Yes, more than likely. More than yes. likely. Uh, Windows. Microsoft unveils Windows 8 logo. I don't know if you Oh, seen really? It. I haven't seen that. The company on Friday unveiled the logo for the next generation of the company's operating system. Microsoft has said it will debut a consumer preview version of Windows 8 on February 29. Everything's happening on the leap year. I've got some stats. You know what? That too. Microsoft aren't big on design, are they? It's a very <laughs> basic uh, <laughs> design. I think I might get my six-year-old to whip something up quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Look oh. at the font. I could draw that freehand. It's... <laughs> It's very basic. It's very, uh, yeah. It's oh only, my god! So this and is they've like, registered it too. It's a registered <laughs> trademark. Oh well, yeah. I don't think you got any worries about anyone stealing that. So the, the, this story goes on. Unlike the multi-color flag-like graphic that has been a component of every Windows logo, going back to Windows 3.1, the new logo is entirely one color, shown in light blue, with a simple yeah. four-pane window viewed at a slight angle. Pension of blue, I call it. <laughs> Hair in blue. The hair in blue. There you go. <laughs> Whip that down to your hairdresser. Oh, can you can you colour my hair the same colour as this? Oh, thank you. Yeah. So there it is. So that looks like that one. And let's have a look at. I had another one here. Now the Surf Life Saving Club. The Surf Life Savers are moving their information and their data and whatever else they might have to the cloud. To the cloud, I say. To the cloud. To the cloud. To the cloud. To the cloud. 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 So what they're doing is they're, they're faced with ageing servers, ageing this and ageing that. One million records to move. Uh, they, they reveal they're going to retire their 12 server and storage boxes. And that's probably that's not, a bad, not a bad call. By May this year, because of, you know, obviously owning your own... Cheaper. Oh, yeah. I hope, they've got a good, I hope they've got good bandwidth. Yeah, they should be right. Well, they're going with uh, Fujitsu's Cloud Data Centre in Homebush Bay. Yeah. So I guess that's right. probably going to be fair. By May this year, the non-profit Surf Life Saving Club plans to build, test and house all the organisational IT, including database and web applications for 158,000 members across the country into the cloud. By adopting, what's that? By adopting infrastructure as a service, uh, they expect to save 55% uh, of, uh, of refreshing, hosting and supporting the old and ageing and dying and dilapidated uh, infrastructure. Savings would be on the scale of a few hundred thousand uh, dollars over four years. So that's not bad. That's not bad. Good on them. Good. And, and good Excellent. to see that the data centre is actually in Australia, not like Telstra shipping it out to Microsoft in Singapore. Sing Singapore. Yeah. And so they we're bound by the laws of Singapore, which um, may have certain laws like, oh, I don't know, we can search a database without a warrant. Yeah, certain implications for, uh, yeah. <laughs> no good. Now, uh, did you have any other stories, Eric? Because I've probably got one more. Yes, I've got one more. I got one more. Optus in court bid to gag Dimitriou, the AFL boss. Uh, Optus launched its action after Mr. Dimitriou, in comments reported in the Sunday newspaper, said Optus are not paying for content. They are lifting it. It is a it is akin to stealing. I think the double Ooh. negative. Um, and all and all it will do is that if sport can, can't rely on that revenue, they will slug the consumers. Well. So basically, he's, he Optus. Uh, said that Mr. Dimitri's statements were misleading and deceptive, that he is taking the relevant legal action to defend our name. You know, because this is after the court case that they won that yeah. allows them to stream the... Yeah. The, uh, so, well, the, you know, I don't get this because the, the, chat, the networks have already paid the AFL for this. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So what, what money are they losing? Well, they're saying that the Channel 7s and the Channel 9s aren't going to want to pay as much if, if this Optus thing goes through. But um, all right, then just what you, they're better off negotiating with Optus and saying, "Look, we know we've won the court case, but how about you pay us a little bit for every stream?" We go, "Okay, we'll give you, you know, a monthly fee. Anyone's everyone subscribes, you know, it might be a five dollar or one dollar a week subscription to the AFL, which is pretty cheap, well, four dollars a month. We'll give you a buck." Well, I, I suppose. Look, I haven't I haven't sat down and thought about it for like six hours. But I can't really see anything wrong, like legally wrong, with what Optus is doing. They're just saying, let me, you, it's like saying you, you ringing up your grandma and say, Granny, can you please record the footy for me? I'll be home in 10 minutes and I'll chase play it. Yeah. 
Why? Yeah. Well, that's all Optus yeah. is doing. You're asking Optus to record it for you. They're that's going. Right. They're going to stream it back to you. No one else. It's like recording it at home. That, exactly. Which you're allowed to do. <coughs> now yeah. the thing is, and wouldn't it should, and what I don't understand is that they're so backward. These people. They're stuck in the dark ages. Before, without people watching it on their phones, whether it be with Optus or Telstra, whoever it is, or Vodafone, the only people watching it were the people at your game or at home on TV. Mm. So you had a you had a, a finite set of eyes watching AFL. If you want to promote the game, wouldn't it be in your interest to get as many eyes as possible watching it, regardless of where they were watching it? Yeah. Because suddenly yep. you've doubled your audience, mm. and you and all the people at the grounds and the people advertising on the grounds and the and the sponsors of the AFL and all the jerseys that they you know it's on the on the players' jerseys. And what, suddenly they're getting double exposure. Yeah. And you're getting double exposure, and then that might mean that more kids are going to want to play. AFL because oh I want to play AFL I saw it on Dad's phone it looks really cool blah blah, blah. but then you, you know, got they're just so backward thinking they they can't think far enough ahead but you got to think to realise that yeah. this could actually work in their favour but you got to also think about like uh, if if you're going to record something it's because you're already sold on the product you know you're not that's just right. testing it out for something that's like a new show that you're going to test out and see if you like yeah, it that's right. you already well, like the product you like okay. it yes yeah, that's, that's a good point like, because I can't stand AFL. <laughs> Neither can I. Right? <laughs> I can't quietly. stand it. And I wouldn't care if it was free. And if someone lobbed a whole bunch of DVDs of every stream ever ever bloody recorded, whether it be the last 10 years or yesterday's game, and lumped it on my front doorstep, <laughs> I wouldn't watch it. No. no. So no, what difference does it make? I'd watch the NRL if that happened, but then yeah, oh, NRL's for me. But that's because I'm Queensland in Queensland. But um, yeah, I know. But, but but you already like it. So what advantage? What or what disadvantage is there to the league? There is no disadvantage. If anything, the people that haven't watched it, it is an advantage for the AFL because you are now exposing it to people who have never watched it, and that is nothing but a good thing. Mm. Well, I just can't Dimitri, see. Dimitri, you you should be fired. You're a moron. Go away. It's time to go, Dimitri. You. Dimitri, you're fired. <laughs> That's it. You're fired. All you're right. Fired. <laughs> All right. You're fired. <laughs> now, government. Now, this is something every now and then you probably do get a good little story, a good little thing that the government does do. Uh, the government is set to trial audio descriptors. Oh, another trial. Yes, actually another trial, which describe action, scenery, costumes, facial expression, and body language for blind and vision impaired viewers. The ABC will will deliver content a, uh, and con- conduct a technical trial of closed audio description using receiver mixed technology technology for the Australian government. Uh, Senator Conroy explained. Well, once he gets his bloody his lips out of somewhere, the trial will <laughs> his nose <laughs> get his nose, his nose out, out of the extract out his of nose. someone's bloody get his nose out of someone's granny undies uh, uh, out, out of the pooper. Now the trial <laughs> will involve. <laughs> Out of the uh, what do they call those big bar- those big undies? The bloody um, oh I don't know, I don't grandma know. pants. Yeah, there's a name for them. There's a special name. Some I don't remember. But uh, the trial involved the broadcast. Oh. Hey, no, I was going to say I oh, know. There's a name for it. Disgusting undies. <laughs> The uh, the trial will involve the broadcast of drama, documentary, and other content with audio description on ABC One for fourteen hours per week during prime time and over thirteen week period commencing in mid two thousand and twelve. There we go. There you go, Greg Evans, perfect match. That's right. That's and that, that's not one of the shows they're going to be scripting because that that show died. <laughs> it died along with along with uh, along with Julia Gillard tomorrow. Anyway, yeah. or Monday, or Monday. Sorry. <laughs> Now, uh, have you got anything else? Otherwise, uh, my last thing is I'm just going to run through some um, some I'm f- done. some fun some fun facts. Uh, uh, fun fa- facts go. Some fun facts about the leap year. This year is the leap year. Yes, 29 yes. days in February this this year, and leap years don't come around every four years. They do most of the time. They come around every four years. But if a right. but there are some facts here, and I'll tell you, if a year, mm. no year that is divisible by 100 can be a leap year. Unless it can be divided by four hundred. Now I don't know who sat down and worked all this crap out, eh? But um, <laughs> but 
<laughs> uh, someone had nothing better to do. And I know that the world, you know, you've got to have the leap year so the days get the same and blah, blah, blah. The sun doesn't, the winter doesn't end up in summer and all this sort of stuff. But um, the year 2000 was a leap year. The year 1900 was not. So who the hell... Because it's divisible by, by 100. That's right, but who the hell works this out? Like, how long ago, have, how long has this been around? And, oh, geez. And, like, you'd think that this has had to be worked out with, with, the, with the, all the computers and the, you know, working all this crap out. But someone's bloody, some dude with his little horonoscope probably worked it out back in the, before the Gregorian calendar. The was Dark even, Ages. That's right. <coughs> Leap year babies born in the year 1884 did not celebrate a single birthday on their actual birth date throughout entire teenage years. February 29th fell on the year they turned 12 and then not again until they turned 20. So there you go. That's amazing. Mm. Yes. That's amazing. That's if you were born in 1984. So if you're born in 1984, tough luck. Have you seen Jenny Macklin? <laughs> she, 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 <laughs> she was not born. She was created. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they threw the mould out. <laughs> oh, that's right. They stomped on it, and then they made her, and then they stomped on it again. That's Leap, right. Leap year babies. Head like a drop pie. The, tra- the tradition of women proposing to men. That's right. Women are supposed to propose to men on the leap year days. I'm going to hang around a pub on the 29th. <laughs> and that went all the way back to the fifth century in Ireland. Uh, in 1288, Queen Margaret of Scotland ordered that any man who was proposed to on a leap year and refused the proposal could be fined either a kiss, a silk dress, or a pair of gloves that were be, uh, to be given to the rejected woman. So a woman who was extremely unpopular... A kiss? Hang on. A fine by a kiss? By kiss by who? By the woman. By the woman? Oh, yeah, okay. Big, oh, no, worse, her mother. The big tonguey. Now, yeah, by her mum. <laughs> your future ex-mother-in-law. Yeah. Uh, the very first calendar that provided, uh, that provided for Leapy was introduced in 238 B.C., so obviously this is when all this stuff was worked out, round about two, back then, by King Plotomy. God, straight. Greek. Greek philosopher, uh, by the sounds of it. Astrologers believe that anyone being born on February 29 has unusual talents and personalities befitting of their special birthday. Well, yeah, right, right, right. There you go. People born on a leap year day are called leaplings. The last leap year was 2008. And the next year will be this year, of course. Um, 2012. The chances of having a leap year birthday are 1 in 1,461. That's not a lot. That's fairly good odds. Yeah, I suppose. And there are about 4 million people in the world who are born on February 29th. So there you go. There's some little Aussie tech head fun stats. Oh, and speaking of birthdays, wasn't it your birthday this week? It was. It was last week, another year. That's right. Very no. good. And how does it feel to turn 35? Oh, I wish. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, a long way since 35. I'm going, I'm going down the wrong side of the hill. You're on the other side of the... You're on the wrong side of what? Wrong side of that age. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Yeah. Well, what they, well, they say 40's the new 30. That'll do. Life begins at 40, mate, so don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to start. <laughs> yeah, that's right. it's, been, it's been deferred. It's that's, on trial. That's it's right. on a trial. It's because of this leap year, damn it. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a trial. That's right, that's right. We're gonna have a, I better go and have a talk fest about it and uh, we might start that's pretty right. soon. Let's comp- contemplate my neighbour. Let's do the, the talk fest and let's, let's have a committee that's that can discuss the, what the com- other committee is doing. Oh, well, on that note, I can feel a good chewing the fat coming on, so we better get out of here before uh, before the, the, the chewing the fat show starts. And that's coming up next on live.aussietechheads.com.au, and you can also listen to it on or watch it on the YouTube and watch it on the iTunes, Eric. Is this, this is correct, isn't it? Correct, indeed. Correct among YouTube, those. iTunes. Uh, YouTube is uh, youtube.com forward slash CTF Studio 71. So you can do that. And or and then when you get there, subscribe to it, then you'll be known and emailed and notified every time a new one goes up. But you can contact Eric, Glenn or Will at Eric, Glenn or Will at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Um, look out for Chewing the Fat. Look out for techwebcast.info replayed every Thursday night before the show uh, on AussieTechHeads.com.au. Okay, until next week, I think, Eric, uh, we'll see you then, hopefully. See you guys. Thank you very much. And And chewing the fat necks and thank you, chat room. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks, everyone, for downloading. 
And uh, please join in at the footy tipping comp, especially the NRL. I think it starts next week, next weekend, or this week. Is it this weekend, next weekend? Whenever it is, it's pretty damn no soon. No idea. No pretty idea. damn soon. So make sure you jump in there so you can win a prize. All right. And, and we'll also have a prize for the uh, the just the tech heads as well. Something, I don't know. I think I've got a, a router here or something. You can have something. Someone can have that. All right. So until next week, uh, we'll see you then. Ta-da.